um, Father Raphael here, and uh, I think many of you have heard from the news, if you've been watching the news, that Governor Newsom has uh, again closed the churches. Um, I'm on vacation right now at my aunt's house, and I was driving here yesterday, and I was shocked when someone called me who was having a funeral planned for his mother and uh, told me that he had just found out that there was no masses because they had closed the churches. So I was surprised as I was driving to discover this information. It was a big, big surprise. So I would like to share with you what that means for our parish. What that means is that because of the closure, we go back to the way it was just uh, a month ago. In fact, a month ago today was when we had our first mass in person, and now we can't have that. So um, we're back to having masses live stream. This will be on YouTube. This way we'll have more access to more people. And uh, this message will be put on YouTube eventually today, later on today. As I said, I'm at my aunt's house, so I'm here outside. And you're going to be hearing the birds because they raise birds. And so <laughs> excuse the noise that's going out here in the farm where my aunt and uncle live in Porterville, California. So what this is going to mean, we're going to go back to having live stream masses that you can see on YouTube. But the masses on the weekdays from Monday to Friday will be at 8.30 in the morning live, which you'll be able to see at a later time, a more convenient time for you, but 8.30. So again, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday will be an English live stream Mass at 8.30 in the morning. And then on Tuesdays and Thursdays, the Mass will be in Spanish live stream. Another thing that will be different on this coming weekend and the following weekends with the YouTube Masses is that the English live stream Mass will be at 11 a.m. in the morning and the Spanish will be at 1 p.m. Uh, in the afternoon on Sundays. So again, that's going to be a little bit different than the times that we had uh, when we were live streaming in the first closure and the second closure. It will be 11 in English and 1 in Spanish on Sundays. So please be aware of those changes and that we're back to having um, the closure of the parish and the office and no in-person masses. Therefore, all the reservations for this coming weekend are automatically canceled and uh, we will follow up with reserved to let you know when we, we have all this. So this will re remain in place um, until further notice. And hopefully that will not be long. It hopefully will not be as long as it was the first time. Um, but just so I want you all to know that. As a result, we're also not having our confessions on Fridays. Uh, those are also closed down. And all appointments that have been made with the priest or the staff have to also be canceled at this time for the same reason that when they closed the churches, it was not just for worship, but it was also for offices. So even though we will continue to be working, the office staff and the priest, whether from home or in the office, we are closed to the public. So I'm, again, I'm very sorry for that, but this is what we have to do at this time. So there will be no appointments. You can still contact us through our email that you can find uh, the email addresses on our website. Unfortunately, this also means that all First Communion Masses, that we were going to have three Masses for the next four Saturdays, uh, each with three Masses, have now all been postponed. And when we are able to open up again, we will reschedule those and get them done as soon as possible so um, that people can make their First Holy Communion. Also, we still do not know what this means for confirmation. We're trying to set up dates for the future, and hopefully in the, we can set those dates even if... Uh, we're closed presently as to when we can have confirmation masses. At present, it looks like we're going to have to have four different masses for the confirmation. But all that will, information will be given to you down the line. So please, um, we ask for your patience. Um, the thing is, is, you know, um, I, I want to thank so many of you who watch us on live stream or were able to make it in person in the masses uh, for the four weeks, five weeks that we had it. Uh, I want to thank you because, you know, you are the people that kept our parish alive. You know, ever since I arrived here, which is now, um, I'm now in my sixth year, July 1st, I began my sixth year as your pastor. And ever since I started here, we always referred to ourselves as a family of St. Patrick's. And that's always impressed me. But during this crisis, you have all proven that that's what we are. We are a family. And we have all stuck together. We have kept the that communal spirit of who we are, by um, the prayers that we've been offering to another, the way we've been there for one another, the way that you cooperated when we did reopen up for masses. It was amazing how people were cooperative, 
offering their best, the people that uh, set up teams to help us receive you, seat you, arrange the chairs and sanitize afterwards. They were awesome. And many of you who continue to support us through prayers and financially during this time, you have kept this parish alive, not just in spirit, but also in services and helping us to pay our bills. You have made the difference. And I, and I cannot stress that enough, the difference that you have made during this time. And the thing is, is now that we find ourselves in a surge of the virus in our state of California, in our counties and our diocese, and finding ourselves closed again, we need you all the more. We need for you to be those heroes that keep us standing, that keep us united as a family, as a community, people that uh, are united in prayer, people who are cooperating to beat this virus by doing our part, by wearing the mask and social distancing, by taking that responsibility. Our parish needs people like you to help us stay united, to help us stay in prayer, and to keep our, our services going. So we do need your donations, I'm not gonna lie. We desperately need our donations because they have fallen recently and it's very hard to pay our bills. We have placed our staff on furlough. Uh, they got a 25% cut. Us priests have taken a 25% cut in our pay. Uh, and that's fine, I have no problems with that. But we still need your help. You got us through this first time that we were closed and we need for you to do that again. And appreciate that you've done it because you are the ones that keep St. Patrick a family. I mean, that's, I think, the thing that stands out the most for me is that we were always called ourselves a family even before I came in. We show, have shown ourselves to be a family, the way we take care of each other, the way we pray together, the way we celebrate together, the way we go to Mass together, the way that we've been there for the, the office staff has been for you. This office staff is phenomenal, and we've done that. And we did it during the crisis when we were closed down. We have to keep that going. We have to keep ourselves standing on our own two feet so that we can be a better family, a growing family, a stronger family, and a family that realizes that Jesus Christ is first. Jesus Christ is the head of our parish. And we have to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. There is a lot to worry about. I know many of you are worried about. You're worried about your jobs, about your families, about your health, and or the health of others around you. I know this is a very scary time for many of you. For us priests too, we're wondering, how can we take care of you? How can we be there for you? We're very concerned, but we have to remember, we are here for Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ is here for us. Let us keep our eyes fixed on him. And you know, one of the things I said in the first week, I, uh, we started Mass up again, and I wanna repeat here, um, because I know many of you did not go, not everyone was at the Mass I did, and I didn't uh, have any of the live stream Masses that first weekend, and that was one of the things that I did for this pandemic, is I decided at the very beginning I am not going to let this virus define the significance of this closure, of this time when we are um, sheltered in place. I'm going to decide, let God and I are going to work on this together, and God will decide the meaning of this time in shelter. And that's what I've done. I've taken more time for prayer. I've done more time for spiritual reading. I've time, uh, even though we continue to have meetings on Zoom, and um, I con uh, connect with people through um, email and through texting, and through FaceTime, but that this is a time for me to grow closer to the Lord. And I, I want to pray that for you and wish that for all of you too, that rather than getting caught up in the worries, which we all have, I mean, I don't, don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm worried too, but that more important that this is a time that maybe we can all come closer to God. Let's not this time, let this time be just about our concerns and our worries. In the midst of our worries, let us turn to the Lord and try to find the extra time. Maybe this is a time to come closer together as family. Maybe this is a kind of time to, to come to closer to God in prayer and reading the scriptures and studying our faith and watching uh, coming together as a family in live stream. Maybe this is a chance to, like I plan to do, go into those cupboards and those drawers and those closets, maybe do a little bit of spring cleaning. Let's make the most of it. Rather than becoming victims of this pandemic, let us become people who st stand strong and find a reason and a way to move forward. So my prayers go with you. I strive to um, uh, grow closer to the Lord and I wish that for you all. You all. And let's pray that as a family, let, let's pray as a family, that soon this closure will come to an end, we'll be back together again, that the pandemic will end, and that we will find ourselves growing spiritually um, at home individually, but also that we can grow together as a family of St. Patrick's. I believe that the family of St. Patrick that we are, through all of your support, through all of our prayers, for all the things that we could do for each other, that we will still stay a family. 
This pandemic does not have to destroy our parish, but we as a parish, you as parishioners, we can build this parish even now when we cannot meet, when we cannot have mass, we can't have confessions, we can't have uh, appointments in our office. You have done it so far, we can continue to do it and actually grow. Let's make it happen. Let's don't become victims of the virus, but rather let us be a people of God who walk with God Christ during this time and are stronger people and a closer community and a, a more loving family together. May God's blessing be upon you and on this day, and may you continue to grow in the faith, and may this pandemic come to an end soon. God's blessing to all of you. Bye-bye now.